Um, so Paul is the coordinator of the Office of Educational Design and Technology at the New York State Education Department. Prior, Paul was a social studies teacher, building administrator, staff developer, district director of technology. His passion uh, for supporting rich and balanced educational technology programs in schools has informed a lot of his work, including one-to-one -one device initiatives, school improvement processes, um, and a huge big history project, a Gates-funded interdisciplinary approach to studying the world. We're excited to welcome Paul Cardatino. Thank you, Tom. And uh, thank you all for, for being here today, participating, uh, growing, um, and and learning from your colleagues. I think it's um, it's so it's so encouraging to see um, dedicated educators uh, going through and leading um, what what our keynote presenter this morning uh, called a radical change uh, for education in in uh, our country in our state um, and for our students and and it is radical um, and and radical can be scary so I think um, I think it's really really important um, that we, uh, talk and join and, and create the community that that we have here in New York State uh, with with CS teachers, um, so that we can get uh, our colleagues that don't teach CS um, on board with our our work and and our vision uh, for getting computer science um, into instruction for students across the curriculum. So uh, Tom's right, I have a few regulatory changes I wanna talk about today. I have um, uh, a little bit of the why though. I really wanna to, want to start a little bit with um, with why, uh, why CS for all in New York State, um, why, uh, why the standards uh, were. Um, yeah, so I, I do wanna share uh, a, a little bit of the why behind uh, uh, standards in New York State. So. The reason standards were, were created for CS uh, in, in New York is really based in equity. Um, we want every student to know how to live productively uh, and, and perhaps most importantly, safely in a technology dominated world. Um, and, and the idea here is not to create everybody, all of our students, we don't need everybody to be an advanced programmer. Um, however, we understand, and you all here understand, I think, that uh, computers and and something else and, and, and other innovative technologies are going to be um, central to the lives of our students uh, for their rest of their lives. Um, and we need to prepare them for uh, the changes to come um, and, and the rapid changes that happen um, with with technology and innovation, uh, and and the only way to do that uh, is is ensuring, and the only way to do that for all students uh, is ensuring we have a baseline set of standards uh, that we uh, are requiring all students to, to engage with, um, and that is an important thing to say. All students, um, these standards are for all students. Uh, and I, I've had questions about, um, you know, certain populations of students and whether or not these these standards apply to them. And the answer is yes, these standards apply to all students. Just like you modify assignments in other uh, content areas or, or in, in what you're doing already, you may have to modify content and instruction for students after you understand what their needs are. Um, but again, th this is a right for students. This is, they have each of our students in New York State have a right to be instructed uh, with with the foundations of computer science and digital fluency. Um, and and that is what New York State is saying by adopting and implementing these standards. And during that standards uh, development process, um, there were four, Sort of guiding principles developed, and equity and access was was right at the top, and 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 it is central to everything we do at New York State Education Department. 
Um, we work for all students, and and what we need is uh, is to really implement these standards uh, so that they are accessible for all students. Uh, and that make no mistake, that is a that is a large project for districts. Uh, of all sizes. I it was just in, in the presentation from Tunisia and Ron from New York City, and the work they're doing there is so encouraging and, it, and also extremely like the, the, starting with equity. Um, and and it's so great to see that. Uh, and and But we also know New York City challenges are very different than challenges uh, in, in other regions of the state where where budgets and, 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 and uh, enrollment is much smaller. So there's unique challenges that happen throughout the state, but that doesn't change the goal of, of the fact that these standards are for all students. And, and I know I, it, it, it's gonna be uh, a pretty repetitive thing that I say uh, because it, it, it I get discouraged when I get questions about, honestly, uh, about certain populations and whether these standards are, are relevant to them. Um, because, the, these are the skills our students, all of them, will need for their lives. Um, even if we're just talking about that safety piece, right? Um, the 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 innovation that happens on social media and 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 elsewhere, our students need to know how to process that. And and being digitally native isn't enough. They need the skills and the understanding of of how this impacts their lives. Um, and 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 some of the nuts and bolts uh, to understand what they're processing themselves. So um, it, it's it, like everything we do. This is based in equity access, but for computer science, for a long time, there was tremendous inequity. Um, we had programs developing at school districts that um, had the resources to develop them. Now what we're saying at the state level is that all students, regardless of, of, of any of that, need to have this, this instruction. In addition to that guiding principle, which is overarching, um, we also felt it was extremely important uh, to have interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary connections so that these standards can be taught throughout the curriculum. It's important to be coherent um, and, and not, not, not only coherent together within that standards document, but coherent in that larger curriculum as well. Um, alignment toward uh, some of our other um, frameworks like the culturally responsive framework. And then it needs to be relevant and engaging. Um, so these are the guiding principles that uh, the, the standards authoring and revision committees were met with and developed themselves. Um, and, and from this, they were able to create that document of, of the computer science and digital fluency learning standards, um, which, you know, I don't have to go into the, the, uh, the content here. Um, I think a lot of what you've done today and, and tomorrow uh, and what you'll do tomorrow is, is sort of the how um, around what, what the content says here. Um, and I think that that's fantastic. Uh, and, what I, I would charge you with going forward is is working within your districts, whatever role you play, um, is to to help these standards that uh, if you're a computer science teacher, you're you're very comfortable with, um, but but help them help your your colleagues, help your your school leaders uh, to distribute these throughout uh, the curriculum. One imp another important thing that uh, I want to address on, on this stage, uh, on this page, is is that digital literacy piece. Um, digital literacy and fluency is not necessarily um, part of computer science, uh, but it was decided early on that that these two things should be coupled in, into one standards package. Uh, it's something that other states have done, um, but it's also uh, you know something really clearly that. Uh, the digital literacy piece is a foundational piece to computer science. Without those skills, um, you can't move forward in, in a lot of this work. So um, ensuring that that we have a foundational uh, place to start with, with student skills was really important. Um, and, and that development process uh, sort of happening in conjunction with one another, there were, there were sort of two paths happening where computer science 
uh, there was a movement to, to get more computer science uh, content into schools, and then a movement to get more digital uh, fluency and, and literacy content into schools. And so it, it, it kind of made a lot of sense to put together under one umbrella. Um, and so that, that's what we're doing here. Uh, so some of our updates in terms of, of what's happened since uh, the computer science and digital fluency standards were um, approved by the Board of, Educa uh, Board of Regents, uh, New York State. Uh, one of the things we've released recently is our computer science and digital sta uh, fluency standards roadmap. And I'll say this, uh, it, it, honestly, it's probably easier for me to just tell you to um, Google uh, NYSED CSDF, then put a link in any chat anywhere. Uh, it's really super simple to Google and it's the first hit. So um, anytime you're looking for any of our resources from uh, SED, uh, it, there, it's one uh, stop shop, uh, NYSED CSDF. Um, but as you'll see, we, we've released a roadmap um, and this is, is are just two snippets from that document. It's a much larger document um, that features um, a lot of different steps along the way. So let me just uh, uh, level set you here on this. Um, this is our timeline for implementation in, in New York State. And as you'll notice, we are through the awareness building phase. Um, so hopefully uh, you, you've been able to, um, school leaders out there or, or BOCES folks out there or even uh, CS teachers out there to help build awareness within your regions and districts um, to the point where everybody knows about these. Uh, if, if, you have, if you have folks who um, are in, in, if you have teachers in your district uh, who don't know about these, I, I suggest you have a conversation with them uh, or at least send them a link uh, because uh, these are, we're, we're, we're getting to that point where um, we're going to be implementing soon. So uh, if you're not already, so um, it's important that everybody uh, at, at the very least right now knows about these and that they're starting to build capacity. So we are in that capacity building phase. Um, we just entered that this summer. And the idea here is we want to ensure that uh, for uh, the next two years until September 2024, when uh, when full implementation happens, we need to ensure our schools have uh, the capability in terms of the infrastructure and hardware um, and also the uh, professional learning that's necessary to get our teachers uh, up, to, up to speed on these standards. Um, one other piece is looking at that overall curriculum uh, K-12, uh, which is something I'll, I'll, I'll talk about a little bit uh, again in, in the near future. So um, we are in that capacity building phase we uh, which should be focused on curriculum uh, resources and professional development. Next year, next September, we'll transfer to that initial implementation phase uh, where we'll see um, computer science, credit bearing computer sciences uh, courses aligned to the standards um, and you know, starting to see uh, some alignment uh, here and there in the other grade bands. And you'll also continue that capacity building, continue the resource acquisition, uh, tweaking the curriculum and, and continued uh, professional learning. And then by September, 2024, you'll see um, that's it. that is the full implementation um, in that earliest grade band. So uh, what that means is you, ha you have your, your, your grade bands. Um, and so for like the 9-12 grade band, in 2024, you have full implementation for ninth graders at, at that the first start of that grade band. Those ninth graders um, uh, should be um, starting with, with full implementation of these standards at that point. Again, um, oh, I'm sorry, w one more thing about uh, the roadmap. Uh, there, there is um, a larger document, like I stated earlier, um, that is customizable on our website. Um, and the reason we wanted to make it customizable is because a lot of these decisions are happening at different levels in different areas of the state. So what we've done is list out and with help uh, from, from partners throughout the state is list out uh, a, a bunch of different steps, districts, BOCES, uh, even uh, we at the state could, could take uh, in order to get districts up to speed and ready for implementation. Um, and they're broken out by the different phases. 
Um, and then uh, districts have the chance to edit that document uh, to figure out who's owning each of these steps that uh, we feel is really important uh, to get to full implementation. Who's owning them in your region, in your district? Um, and that document's a really helpful document to help uh, sort of self-evaluate where you are um, and see what you need to do going forward. So I, I recommend uh, getting onto our website. Again, Google NYSED CSDF. This is what you'll find. Um, and here you'll find on the left side nav bar, you'll see all um, different spots for, for your timeline for rollout and implementation. That's where you'll find that roadmap. Um, but you'll also find a bunch of different resources there for you as well. Um, really important to, to visit here uh, relatively frequently to see what kind of updates and, and what kind of resources we've posted. Here are uh, examples of a couple different resources that uh, are up there now. On the left, uh, you will see the computer science and digital fluency learning standards at a glance documents. Uh, so these are documents broken down into the grade bands that um, you know teachers, I, I see these as really important for teachers to have handy as they're planning um, because it, it's a, a couple quick documents to help you remind what, what standard is which uh, for, for the, the standard. So really easy to, to sort of navigate. On the right side, what you'll see um, are, are examples of how these standards uh, might look in a classroom. And uh, initially, these examples were attached right in the, the larger standards documents. Um, but uh, through revision and, and through our revision committees, uh, we found that it was getting a little confusing for uh, teachers um, and others, especially those outside of CS, uh, to understand that that the examples weren't the standards. These are just examples uh, of, of what you might see if you walk into, let's say, an art class and they're addressing K-1 uh, standards, uh, computational thinking one, right? Um, so so the, these are really cool documents, the standards examples documents. I think this is uh, these are some documents that can help some of your common branch teachers in, in the, in the pre-K to five. Um, or the uh, or any of your teachers really, or your your upper level teachers who have been asked to to integrate one or two of the standards into their their curriculum. So I think these are are nice to get you thinking about what are some ways these these can be integrated throughout uh, the curriculum in in subjects even uh, like phys ed. Um, so uh, really interesting uh, documents there that that are ac accessible on our website as well. Uh, in addition to that, we, we've created an, a customizable Excel chart of standards and examples that's also on the website. So um, you can have your, your teachers uh, engage with that and get the information that they need at their level. Um, and another thing I'm really excited to, to talk about with you is uh, our Smart Start grant, which I, I heard um, ha had been mentioned a, a bunch of times already in some other sessions today. Um, our Smart Start grant, uh, I, I can't say enough about um, our 17 grantees who have just, uh, they ended up their, their first year of this grant earlier this year, and they've provided us uh, one of the requirements for uh, being a Smart Start grantee is that you have to provide us um, with uh, artifacts or resources that you have developed um, for the K-8 grade bands. Uh, that relate to the computer science and digital fluency learning standards. Um, what you'll see when you go on our website right now um, is a list of those grantees and links to their websites that they've created to house these resources and artifacts. There's some amazing stuff on there. Um, I, I'm, I've been so impressed looking through each time I get a chance to do so on, on uh, you know, one of the things I always like to point out is what one of our, our grantees uh, created a, a list of books for K-8 teachers um, that, that can be used to align to certain standards within, um, uh, within the document. So it, it, there's so much great stuff in there. There's lesson plans, um, there's unit plans, there are uh, PD materials, um, there's curricular materials. I mean, really a lot of great stuff. Uh, I would I would uh, encourage you to visit there and, and take a look at some of the uh, materials your colleagues have created throughout the state. And I know a lot of folks here and, and 
um, who have worked with us uh, on our cap, which I'll talk about in a second, um, you know, are already engaging with their colleagues and do so regularly. Um, but it, it, it's important that we, again, spread this material so that uh, those folks that, that aren't engaging in the CS content regularly uh, also know about these resources and are able to um, develop some ease with the, the learning standards. I think one of the things that these resources do really well um, is give you some resources that can help uh, your teachers um, feel a little bit less scared about these the, the content that, that they're doing. Um, I think we all know um, in, in who have been working with these standards for a little bit that, and anybody who, who's done that and has, has you know, experience in, in uh, some of the earlier grades and in, in elementary instruction, I think we, we all understand that a lot of the work or a lot of lessons are happening already that can be aligned to these standards. So it's important to start there with your, your teachers and, and your colleagues uh, to help them understand what part of their curriculum is already aligned to these um, standards and, and what small tweaks can be made uh, to some other lessons that will help you to align these and make your lessons uh, and your activities intentionally aligned. Um, so I, Smart Start Grant, I encourage you again to look at these resources. I thank you to those who are on here that have developed those resources. I'm really proud of these and, and, and I'm really proud of uh, the way our grantees have, have worked. And they're going to be updated again after this next uh, year of the Smart Start Grant. So you'll see more and more uh, coming down the pike. All right, now to, on to some regulatory changes. So shifting gears a little bit, uh, but um, also in the vein of, of how is the, the state supporting uh, this work. Um, oftentimes the state uh, can, can help to create and develop resources. Uh, but one of the things that, that we are the only ones who can do is, is help to, um, to uh, clarify and change sometimes regulations uh, so that it, it provides uh, schools and districts with the opportunity to do innovative things uh, or different things, and one of those uh, one of those innovative things, I think, um, and something that could be really good for uh, both computer science uh, in our our state and our career and technical education programs in the state is that um, there is a proposal uh, to um, allow schools to consider computer science as a CTE area, um, which the ramifications. Uh, were, were covered by my colleague, Michael LaMastra in another session, in a breakout session today. I would recommend you go if you're interested more on that because I am not the CTE expert. I just wanted to, to let you know about this so you could find out more on your own. But um, Michael did a great presentation on, on uh, with, with the, their um, technical assistance center as well um, on, on how this might look in schools and, and how schools can, can get this started. Um, but it, it, it's a really uh, nice opportunity for both students and schools who are, are interested in growing their computer science program. Um, I think it, it, it's one of those things that, that can motivate districts throughout the state to, um, to create more programming and, and to engage their students a little bit. So uh, this it, it, right now it is a proposed change um, to, to our regulations. Uh, and, and is expected to be voted on, on uh, Monday, I think, this coming Monday. So um, it, it's likely that, uh, uh, you know, very soon that this will be official. But um, so keep an eye out for that. But again, I, I, would, I would direct you toward, I'm glad that all of these sessions are, are available to you. I would direct you toward Michael's, Michael Amastra's session on, on this uh, that he did earlier today. And now to the, the the piece that I think everybody, uh, a lot of folks are are really interested in, um, which is uh, certification. So, uh, in 2018, um, the Board of Regents uh, approved a computer science uh, certification um, pathway, and so that had um, that has a lot of impact, which means uh, that 
there's a lot of com computer science courses that we're mapping that will require a computer science certified teacher to teach those courses. Um, and now this this has uh, this is scary as well, right? Um, especially for your your smaller districts um, who may not have a, uh, a computer science certified teacher. Um, I, if you visited the session earlier about certification and the different pathways toward computer cer science certification, we do have some programs up and running in the state uh, already at colleges. Um, but, and we do have graduates of those programs. So we have, have some um, computer science um, certified teachers already. However, we don't have enough to cover all of the, the courses in, that are going to be happening in the state. So uh, the state understood, we understood that we needed to um, develop some flexibility uh, so that schools can be compliant with the computer science certification um, uh, regulation. So what was developed uh, to give schools flexibility is something called a, a statement of continued eligibility or an SOCE. So um, currently, uh, it's September 1st that, that the certification goes into effect. However, um, again, another proposed change has been presented to the Board of Regents, and I anticipate it to pass that would amend this date to September 1st, 2024. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll talk as, as, so, as though that's the date uh, with the understanding that that is pending. Um, 2024... It, what needs to happen at that point? Well, any computer science course taught um, will need a computer science certified teacher. However, here's how the SOCE works. The SOCE can be granted to teachers in their school district who have taught at least one computer science course and it is good then for 10 years following the date that it is issued. So what does this mean? This means that once it gets closer to the, uh, the implementation date, which again is pending September 1st, 2024, any teacher who is looking to teach computer science courses following that date must apply for the SOCE. And then that certification, the SOCE, will be good for 10 years following. It'll only be good in the district where they taught. So if you're a, a, a teacher, you taught a, a computer science, you're a math, let's, for instance, let's say you're a math teacher, uh, you are math certified, but you taught one computer science course and you get this statement of continued eligibility, the SOCE. For the next 10 years, you are eligible to teach computer science courses in that district you work for. If you were to move districts, you are no longer eligible to teach computer science courses because you are no longer you will no longer have the SOCE. Certification is confusing in New York State. I am not a, a certification expert either. Um, so I'm sure there are many questions and some I may not be able to answer. But um, this certification is, again, meant to provide flexibility for districts. The idea here is that we do not want districts to be into in a place where they don't have certified teachers to teach these courses. Here's a couple other sort of requirements too. You must have a professional or permanent certificate to get the SOCE. So when you apply for it, you must have a professional or permanent. So if you have an initial now, but you'll have one next year, you'll be okay. But if you're going to be if you're still going to have an initial certificate in September 2024, that's going to be an issue. You're not going to be able to, to you're not going to be eligible for the SOCE. 
Next thing, you have to have a computer science teaching experience between September 1st, 2017 and September 1st, 2023 now, but 24 once the Board of Regents approves the, the proposal. That's one course, and it could be just one semester. So if you have a math certificate now or another certificate and you would like the SOCE, but you've never taught a computer science course, talk to your school leaders. See if they can allow you to teach a computer science course over the next couple of years. So, and then there, on the Office of Teaching Initiatives webpage, there's a list of acceptable courses that would count toward this uh, computer science teaching experience uh, requirement. I'm sure there's a lot of questions on that, and, and I can't see the chat right now. So um, if it's blowing up, I apologize. I will try to, to get to those uh, once we get to the Q&A. Um, but this information is on our website, um, and uh, you can feel free to reach out to our office. I'll give you our um, our uh, email at the very end um, because we are helping out the the uh, office of teaching initiatives answer some of these questions because uh, we we're we're intimately involved with this. Um, but if there's a question I can't answer at that at that point, I'll make sure I get, I get the right answer from the right people. Okay, so uh, certification, huge thing, I understand. I'm sure there's questions in the chat. I'll try to address them in, in, in a bit. Um, lastly, uh, we do have a few next steps. Um, you know, we're, we're looking at what kind of other regulatory and policy recommendations uh, will be helpful for districts as they implement um, the K-12 program requirement, uh, the, K, the, the K-12 standards. Um, is there is there something we can do to help embed this into uh, in program requirements? Is there uh, are there other flexibilities that we think um, districts will need? So we're 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 looking at what other um, regulations might might impact implementation and what other policies might impact. Um, the other thing we're doing is uh, we are we have a computer science um, advisory panel. Um, it, it's our content advisory panel. It's called the CAP. Uh, we engage with them regularly uh, to help develop some of these guidance materials, some of these tools, some of the resources. They were instrumental in creating a lot of the tools I discussed already. Um, a lot of you are here, and I look forward to seeing you again in a couple weeks uh, where we're going to look at some of those Smart Start resources. Um, so I, I, I think that um, we're, we're continually engaging with folks throughout the state. Stakeholders have been instrumental in this process since the beginning. Um, the, the, the writing of the, of the standards themselves uh, featured a, a very wide ranging uh, committee of, of folks from all sorts of, all corners of the state in all, um, all aspects of education and, and expertise in computer science, even um, uh, in, in the higher ed field. So, we're constantly working with the, the field to, to create um, guidance around uh, computer science and digital fluency, uh, and, and we will continue to do that uh, for, for a long time. So um, more to come from, from our partners as well. All right, I'm there. I'm at the questions and discussion. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop off uh, my, my presentation here, uh, stop sharing and try to find some of these questions that are probably uh, streaming in. Uh, I've tried to direct people to the Q&A section. Okay. So please, everyone in the audience, if you have not put your chat, your questions from the chat into the Q&A, we will not find them because the chat is long. <laughs> yep. So uh, Phil uh, makes, makes a great point here. Um, they, uh, a CERT pathway for CS um, re doesn't require uh, that much extra credits. Um, and and you will need that certification beyond those 10 years uh, of the SOCE. Um, so it, it's really, really important that 
if you if you apply for and are granted the SOCE, that you continue to look out for your own certification beyond those 10 years. So um, really, really important. All right, question. I'm going to try to go to the bottom of the question. So I, uh, um, um, <laughs> so I uh, hit, hit the first questions first. Um, David has a question about the individual evaluation for CS certification. I don't have an exact date for, for when that's happening yet uh, because we're, we're looking at extending um, with the Board of Regents extending that piece, uh, but that's something I can bring back to, to the Office of Teaching Initiatives and um, uh, and uh, so I'll, I'll try to get the answer to that. Is this CS certification requirement for commencement level courses only? That's a really good question. So it, it, it's it's one that um, ha has it, it is obviously like like everything regarding certification and uh, it is is a challenging one to answer. Um, I'll say that for courses that are CS standalone courses, yes, absolutely though there will be a certification requirement for those, whether they're in elementary, middle, or, or high school. Um, we are in the process of mapping um, courses to uh, the certification, and we're not finished yet with that. Um, so there will be more to come on that. Uh, however, certainly we do anticipate that a lot of the standards should be um, not anticipate. We we are are advising that many of these standards should be integrated throughout the curriculum and, and in other courses. So if you're teaching a standard on impacts of computing, um, and you're in a social studies class, you don't need to be CS certified, but there are, there are courses that have a course code um, that are CS standalone courses and they will need the CS certification. So that list will, will be forthcoming. We, we, get, the, uh, we get the question about um, how will the standards be assessed all the time. Standards, uh, again, uh, I'll say it pretty clearly. The standards are for all students. Um, therefore, we do expect all students to be instructed according to these standards, all students. There is no state level assessment for CS right now. Will there be in the future? Maybe, maybe not. So we need to treat these standards like we treat other standards too that don't have a state assessment. We teach them and we teach them to all of our students. We create local assessments to summatively assess them, to formatively assess them. So it's important that we, we it's important that the narrative around standards is not always that they're tied to an assessment at the state level. And if we're thinking about that it, that way, then we're doing a disservice to our students. I recommend you, you go watch Tunisia and Ron too from, from their presentation from, from New York City. Uh, their commitment to equity and, and, and ensuring that all students um, receive CS instruction is is commendable. Um, and they're not waiting for, for, for an assessment. They're not waiting for uh, us to, to have some sort of accountability procedure there to ensure that their students are getting that instruction. They're doing it because they know their students need it. They're doing it because they know that students in the future, when they become part of the labor market, will need the skills that we're addressing in, in the New York State learning standards. So it's easy from a resource point of view to say, well, we're not being assessed on this, so we, we, we don't need to put resources toward it. But my perspective is that you're, you're doing a disservice at that point to your students if you're relying or waiting for an assessment at the state level. 
there's been a request to read the question before answering it just for the video recording. Oh yeah, sorry, my fault. <laughs> no, no worries. Um, uh, do you have any information about when State Ed will be opening the pathway for existing CS teachers who have industry experience and a prior degree in CS or IT? Uh, no information about that yet. We're still working on that. As, again, with the uh, the extension of the uh, the proposed extension to September 2024 for the the certification, um, uh, we, we're, we're, our timeline is still a little bit up, up in the air on that. But you can still teach one class out of certification, right? Well, I, I think you're relating, um, you're you're uh, referring to Tony um, to the incidental teaching flexibility, uh, which um, it is not as simple as as you make it sound where you can teach one class out of certification the district needs to prove that there is a hardship um, and that they have exhausted uh, all uh, resources um, and they could not find a certified teacher uh, for that and and even then you you have uh, uh, the regulation states you can teach up to five hours per week Right now, I believe we're, we're in an in emergency regulation, so you can teach t up to 10 hours. Um, but again, the district needs to prove that they've exhausted um, the their uh, ability to, to find a teacher. So it, there, it, it's not as simple as you can teach one class out of certification. Uh, I would recommend you look up the, um, the incidental teaching requirements, and that will, uh, that will give you the regulation on that. How does certification work for non-CS teachers who are teaching integrated computer science? Can a student who addresses their CS standards via six different integrated classes across grades 6 to 12 still graduate if none of those teachers are certified in CS? Um, curricular decisions are made at the, um, at the local level. So if if the curricula, if your district decides to spread those standards out into non-CS specific courses, then then yes, that 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 could work. Um, so yes. When will the SOCE be available? Uh, it is not cur currently lift, listed. Um, it'll be available closer to the um, closer to the date when. Um, the certification will be necessary. Uh, and the reason for that is you wouldn't want to apply for the SOCE now anyway, uh, because then that 10-year clock starts right, right when you receive it. Um, so you, if you're going to apply for the SOCE, I recommend you apply to, for it um, the closest, as, you know, as close as possible to when the certification um, goes into effect. Uh, the, the requirement goes into effect. So cl as close as possible that what we're expecting to be that September 1st, 2024 date. Will it be only a high school cert? Will elementary need cert as well? I think I addressed that if there's a standalone CS course in elementary, uh, you, you will need um, the certification. Um, we, we don't anticipate Many of those, perhaps, are out there, and I'd, I'd love, I'd love to hear it. Um, but uh, if it's a standalone CS course, again, we're still doing that mapping. We will release uh, w which courses um, a CS certification will be required for. Um, uh, but, but um, generally speaking, the the, the standalone CS course um, it will require a a, a computer science cert. If the Board of Regents changes to allow CS to be in the CTE certification, does this mean that CTE technology teachers would not need the SOCE or a CS cert? I'm not 100% sure on that. I, I believe you'll still need the CS cert. Um, if it's a standalone C CS course, you'll need the CS cert. If teachers co-teach for one semester with an existing CS course, will that count as experience? You will have to be the teacher of record. The SOCE is in is the the SOCE is if the teacher has taught, compu taught computer science only, computer applications, computer literacy. Um, we are 
there is a list of those courses on the Office of Teaching Initiatives website um, that are eligible for the SOCE. So uh, we have a whole list of them. Um, uh, I think there you can link to it from our page too. Um, so if you look up NYSED CSDF uh, and there's a certifications page on there, uh, you can see what, what courses there are. Oh, Tom put a link in there, perfect. Um, will the SOCE be available to teachers with CTE certifications? Um, if you've taught a um, uh, an approved course on that list, um, you will, will be available uh, eligible for the and have a an approved permanent or or um, professional cert. So you have it, it depends on the cert you have for CTE. Um, whether it's professional or permanent, uh, some of the the other supplemental ones, I'm not as as um, up on right now uh, for for CTE. So um, I don't want to give you a, a definite reply on that. Um, but go to the OTI website and the list. They, they should have the, the information there uh, regarding CTE. Let's see, how many do I have left here? I don't have a lot of time left, Tom, but I, I, I can keep going if you want. I know we're, oh, actually, I'm over time, right? Yes, and we'd love for you to keep going as long as you can. That's fine. <laughs> I can keep going for another little bit. I don't know how many people. Or we, we can. We can also. Me, I've got these questions, and we can yeah. deliver them to you for a written response as well. Yeah. I want to respect your time and other people's time. Sure. Um, you prefer. Uh, I can keep going for a little bit. I, you know, okay. some of this stuff I don't have the information for, but I'll try. Um, yes. Uh, I got to find where I left off here. Um, for the SOCE, is it just one class for a half year or is it one class all year? It can be a one semester course. Uh, I wonder if people know that the additional cert pathway, I think I did that. Uh, yeah, we, we talked about that already. Teresa says, since the CS standards are required, will a high school CS course be required for high school diploma? That's a really great question. And um, again, uh, those decisions are made locally. Um, curriculum is local. So uh, different districts will do this different ways in how they choose to um, uh, map the standards. So um, there's, there's no one answer to that question. Um, I could see many districts doing that and I could see many districts saying that these are going to be integrated throughout the rest of the courses uh, in our district. So. Um, it's it's a really uh, great question, but not one that can be answered at the state level. Are the teacher shortages being addressed with these teacher regulations? Uh, Rebecca asked that question, and, and another really great question. Um, the SOCE was was developed for that reason specifically, um, because there was an expectation once uh, because the, the the certification was the certification in law. Well, the certification, uh, I mean, it, it was passed in 2017 or 18. So it's it, we, we delayed it as much as possible, I, I think, because of the, 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 the fear of teacher shortages. Um, and then delaying that, that uh, the implementation of that was, was one way to, to address the teacher shortages. And then the SOCE was another way. Um, now, if you're if you're talking about general teacher shortages, that's not really my area of expertise. Uh, I, I will say that that the department is aware and 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 talking about it and you know all of that. But but uh, general teacher shortages, I, I can't speak to as much. Um, but the SOCE was specifically designed to address possible shortages in CS teaching. Um, will, while these standards are great, are schools required to implement these? And if they're required, how will they be assessed? I think I already addressed that. Is there now or will there be a computer science CST exam? Um, that's another great question. Uh, and I, I actually don't have the answer to that. I can find that that question. Will NYCE, NYC, all five boroughs be considered to be a district when applying to the SOCE? Um, again, that's that's more of like a certification nuts and bolts question. I I I, I don't I don't know. If we recognize the need for dedicated music art, 
Uh oh, my thing just got. Um, and PE teachers in K 12, why don't we acknowledge that need for CS? Uh, I think we are. That's exactly what we're doing with the certification pathways um, and the certification requirement. Uh, starting in, in 2024 or expected to start in 2024, uh, computer science courses need a certified computer science teacher. Will all high school students be required to take a CS course to graduate? I already addressed that. What can NYSED do to start collecting data about the CS and DF standards? As a state, the data can show our progress, and including CSDF in the New York State report cards, school report cards can show the CSDF is important for all students. Data, that's a great question, and um, you know something we can we can certainly talk about um, at the cap level uh, with our content advisory panel. Um, and and to be honest, without uh, statewide assessment, it's tough to measure student achievement um, in a standard way. Uh, however, um, I'm, I'm sure there's ways that we can uh, start to take the pulse of districts, uh, even without a, um, a standardized assessment statewide. Uh, but that's something that that has you know we'll have to talk about um, probably at the cap level, and then and then figure out uh, sort of how to do that. Um, and and we're always uh, open for feedback, um, and would love to would love to hear about what ideas you might have. Uh, Leon says a CS test, CST test is in development. I figured that just, I I don't know if that's true or not. I, I'll, we'll we'll um, go with Leon now, um, but uh, that, that does make sense. How is the state addressing the need for more student internship and apprenticeship W work-based learning opportunities in CS now that we have these standards in place? Um, I, I, there is no plan uh, that I'm aware of at the moment to address uh, the need for this. Um, I would be really open to having a conversation about some of the thoughts you might have. Uh, but um, right now, nothing in place uh, at this moment. And, um, you know, I, I, I do think the state can, can play a role in that. Uh, but I think a lot of that will happen at the local level as well. Just wondering how someone that works for a BOCES as a staff developer could get this new certification. Doesn't seem possible to get the extension. We do not teach a CS course to school students, but we do support teachers and provide PD. Scratch, make code, code.org, game design, Python, robotics, et cetera. Many of us have been providing PD on these for years. Um, yeah, so I, I think the the SOCE would would be a problem for, for a BOCES staff developer. If you're not, if you haven't taught at that BOCES a a CS course, that, that would be an issue. You wouldn't be eligible for the SOCE. Um, the individual evaluation pathway, I think would be something to look into for, for uh, somebody like that um, without having much, much more knowledge of their situation. Oh, and finally, maybe, this is the last one that I can see at least. As a TA teaching CS classes in primary elementary grades right now, would it be required to have a certified CS teacher once this is implemented? Um, if it is a standalone CS course in uh, elementary or primary grades, um, there you'll have to have a certified CS teacher in there. Um, again, we're still mapping that. So uh, the exact courses and, and the course codes um, will, uh, will be what determines exactly which uh, courses require a certification. So um, but but the general guideline will be, um, uh, you know, standalone CS courses. Membership of the CAP public, uh, it, it's not. I, I wouldn't say it's public. Uh, we we have uh, CS stakeholders from across the state on on that group. Um, we may call for more representatives uh, at some time in the future. Um, but right now, we 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 don't have that call out. Um, so, uh, but we will certainly engage with the CS community in New York uh, when we uh, look for more members. Uh, we have content advisory panels in all subjects. Uh, so the ones that have been around forever have content advisory panels. So I anticipate um, having the, the cap in perpetuity. Um, and, uh, and so there, there, there should be another opportunity to uh, participate in the future. 
How far in advance of requiring this certification will you open the pathway for people with industry certification? Uh, again, uh, I, I don't have a good answer on that. That's going to be up to uh, not my office, um, but the Office of Teaching Initiatives. Um, but uh, that, that was a question that was asked frequently, so I'll, I'll definitely engage with uh, that office to, to get a, a good answer. Uh, where can you find more information about how the individual pathway works? Office of Teaching Initiative uh, website. Um, again, for, for anything on NYSED website, I would just Google it, NYSED uh, OTI, uh, NYSED, uh, you know, CSDF for our standards. And even that has, has a link to the OTI information about the computer science uh, search. So um, for, for sure, just our, our website is, is the one-stop shop for, uh, for a lot of uh, great, great information. Paul, okay. we are incredibly grateful to you uh, for staying long and uh, answering all the questions. Um, I think these have been pent up over, over some time. So yeah. We'll, yes. Um, I get it. Yeah. So, um, and yeah, now we have a great, you know, base of knowledge. Um, we're super excited to continue to engage with your office. But thank you, thank you, thank you for, for coming today. Really Absolutely. And, Thanks and for the opportunity. I appreciate it, Tom. I, I, I do. Of course.